Okay, now we're going to look again at graphing expanded polynomials, but this time we're going to use factoring. And if you can factor, that's always the best way to go because it's a lot easier than, you know, finding rational zeros but using synthetic division, etc. So if we take a look at this four-term uh, polynomial, we notice that we can factor an x squared out of these first two terms, and I can factor out a 16 out of these two terms, so I'm going to see what happens when I do that. I mean, worst comes to worst, I can always look for rational roots, but let's see if we can factor this. So out of these first two terms, I'm going to take out a uh, x squared. And what's left in the first term, I have an x and plus a 2 in the second term. Now out of these ter two terms, and remember we always talked about this before, when we have a four-term grouping, we always factor out this leading sign. So I'm going to take out a negative 16. And then what's left, well, if I take a negative 16 out of a negative x, I've got a positive x. If I take a negative out of a negative, I've got a positive 2. Or six, positive, and 16 goes on 32 twice. And voila, notice we have a factor of x plus 2 in both these two terms, now I've got two terms, and what's left is x squared minus 16. And again, this is still y equals, this hasn't changed, so this is y equals, so this is still my polynomial, but now I'm getting it more in factored form. But I can also factor this because this looks like the difference of perfect squares because of what's the square root of x squared x? What's the square root of 16, 4? So I've got the difference of perfect squares. So I know that this is going to factor to be the product of the sum and the difference of these little numbers. The sum and the difference of x and 4. And then I'll bring down my x plus 2 factor. And there's my polynomial in factored form which is nice. A lot easier. Now what's my end behavior going to be? Well, my end behavior, just all we have to do is look at the, we can add up your exponents, you still have 3. So y equals x to the third. Or you could just look at your largest degree term. That's going to determine your end behavior, the largest degree term. Now this is positive odds, so it's the same thing as y equals x to the first power. And that's again, our model function for that is just our diagonal line. So our model function for any, any odd function is y equals x, and that's a diagonal line with a slope of 1 that goes through the origin. And that gives you your end behavior right there. Okay, what's my y-intercept? Well, my y-intercept is the that's when x is 0 what's y. And it's real easy when it's expanded form because all I have to do is put a 0 in for x and this is 0, that's 0, that's 0. What's left? Negative 32. So now we've got it in expanded form. So what are my zeros? My zeros are x equals any value that makes it 0, so that'd be negative 2, negative 4, and positive 4. So those are my three zeros. Okay, so we're ready to graph it. We'll get out a ruler. Make a nice straight line. I've also got lines here, so I'll try to line this up so it's really, you know, relatively horizontal. And let's see, we're going to have a negative 32, so I guess I'll put that a little bit more lower than higher. And it looks like I'm going out to negative 4 and positive 4, so I guess I can make that about even. So something like this, y, x. And we can put some increments in here. We're going to go out to 4, 1, 2, 3, 
4 and negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So there we go. 1, 2, 3, 4 and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. All right? So make your graph. And then we're going to go down to negative 32. So I'm going to make the scale. So I'll have it go down here negative. Make it by 8s, I guess. Negative 8, negative 16, negative 24, and negative 32. So that's a fairly nice graph. And my behavior is going to start like this. Come from lower left and end in upper right. Matches that. And I put my zeros down, I got a negative 2, negative 4, so negative is my negative 4, there's my negative 2, here's my intercept, negative 32, and a positive 4. And now we're ready to graph it. And uh, it probably maybe will crest in between here, so we'll say it comes down from here. And I don't know how high it's going to go. I'd have to put an, I could put a negative three in there to find out exactly what that point is. And between here and here are roots. So I imagine it's going to, I could kind of estimate this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So halfway, one, two, three. So I figure it's going to maybe crest in between there. So I'll kind of estimate it's going to come down like this. And maybe go down a little bit lower. And then come back up. And estimate like that. Now I don't know how if it's going to behave like this, but I would say maybe the top of the mountain is going to be between these two bases here, these two points here, and maybe the lower part would be right between these two points here. So again, that's one. I should put zero in. I guess that would be a little bit. So I got how many units here? One, two, three, four, five, six between these two zeros. So I figure maybe. Right between it would go down the lowest here. So that's not even as, as good as I, if I really want to use that technique to estimate it. Again, that's why I use pencil, so you're going to erase these things. Put them in ink, you're kind of stuck. And I say maybe it's going to be right at the lowest point here, in between there. So I'd maybe have this come down like this. That's getting a little bit more refined to kind of figure out what's going to go. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to behave like that. The only way we can tell is by putting a lot of points in. I'd have to put one and, one and a half in to see if that's actually what that point is. And I don't even know if that's the lowest point. I'd have to put a lot of points in. So you can't really tell. Now, when you, like I've said before, when you study calculus, you'll be able to find these, the coordinates of these points exactly with no, with no trouble. It's very easy. All right? Okay. So that's a pretty good idea of the graph. I think that'd be pretty good. And they, they do have graphing um, calculators online, so you could take, take look at look, take a look at an online uh, graphic calculator app. They've got those for your phones now, so you can take a look at that and you can see how close you really are. Okay, hope that makes sense. And again, go back, pause it, double check it. So we have, we used actually two factoring methods here. We used uh, four-term grouping, and then we used the difference of perfect squares. Okay.